Okay, Abad, go now. Yeah, uh, so we are installing the Linux machine on this virtual boxes, right? Correct. So uh, we can install Cloudera on one Linux box and on other HDP, right? Yes. Or we will use the same C Linux box. No, no, we will we will have two separate Linux boxes. I mean that would be the best. Otherwise, you can have both the things simultaneously. But the thing is, problem is, uh, under the hood they are having same HDP or sorry same Hadoop version. So you will definitely get conflict if you install both Cloudera and Hortonworks on the same machine. So at least if you and then other uh, other thing is basically is, uh, I had created three node cluster uh, with 16 GB i7. Okay, that you can create. But then again, you are not going. You you cannot deploy all the components of Cloudera or Hortonworks because together they are actually you know just to make them run only. It will it will take at least around 10 GB of RAM on each node <laughs> that you will never achieve. Right. So on, on one on 16 GB machine, it is very difficult. What I can uh, provide you on model basically using Docker and all you can create only one machine and then have created the whole cluster three node cluster within the same machine. That is what possible with Docker. Okay, so it will actually just save you some kernel uh, memory that is required at least around one GB It will save one to 1.5 GB and with 10 GB with with 7 GB I had created with with the Docker images and it it looks like that it is working as a 16 GB of total uh, RAM I have given to it. Okay, though it is only actually 7 GB only I have given, but it seems that it is its performance would be around 12 to 13 GB of RAM. So uh, you will try that. So with that basically you will also get the concept of Docker. Okay, and uh, you will know that how the containerization or you know that kind of thing can be done. So I had created if I tell you over here. This is this is one of machine call which is one which is, yeah, CentOS over here. This is seven GB of RAM, but within it, it seems that three three machines are running. Okay, one is actual machine and two is Docker images. Okay, and the Docker images are actually uh, being worked as an independent node within one machine. They are having their individual IDP addresses, and yes, I had created three node. HDB 2.5 cluster within one CentOS. Okay, that you can do basically. But uh, uh, still, what I suggest is Google Cloud is best uh, in terms of even to understand the cloud computing you know, uh, because it is anywhere required for you. Because most of the times you may either install your whole Hadoop cluster on AWS or Microsoft Azure or IBM Linux. Okay, uh, AWS does not give very free tier. I mean, the free tier of AWS is very very less. You cannot even create more than you know one machine with this stuff. But on three hundred dollar created basically on Google Cloud, you can go like you know even ten nodes of very considerable size of hardware. Okay, and then you can just practice over there. If you have a lot of credit cards, just change your credit card email ID. So at least thousand dollars, there is no nobody can stop you till thousand dollars. Okay, I mean then again you can just change credit card and again get. The more number of credit cards you have, the more credit you can easily get over there. Okay, so this is what you can do. Okay. Okay, all right, got it. So let it run. So we were discussing about public, private, and this one. Now we were about to discuss about you know the type of adapters that are those are provided over here in 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 virtual box okay to each image and that is not something that is possible in vmware and that's why actually i liked v virtual box okay so basically what you can do with multiple adapters that is assigned to one of your machine so basically you will have let's say adapter 1 adapter 2 adapter 3 this could be physical or virtual both okay it depends uh, in our laptop basically you will have two kind of adapters one is LAN, ad LAN adapter where you can physically insert the cable okay uh, from your Wi-Fi router okay the, your Wi-Fi router is having some output ports if you see the behind basically there are uh, three or four connections you can hardwirely connect your few of the machines through that ports okay so and then another one is Wi-Fi port. Since it is hard, since it is hardware Wi-Fi 
uh, adapter so you can uh, you know you can also check their names if i can tell you so basically let's say this is my windows or i will just go to any of the settings and try to see the network and then go to uh, basically here if you see if i select bridge i came I, I will come to know that what are all the available physical hardware i am having so one is advanced n6235 this is my wifi adapter and this is ethernet connection i217lm this is my physical uh, adapter to which i can connect the plug or i can insert the you know uh, the, the the hardware connection okay so we can we can get our internet access with two ways either through wi-fi or through hardware connection right so this will handle hardware this is hardware connection and this is the wi-fi router okay so we can select which one we want okay and this is only coming in the bridged adapter okay so this we will clear that we are actually getting something through wi-fi when we talk about bridge when you talk about net what are all options there is no option at all okay there is no option at all then what about host only so if i say host only it gives me only virtual host uh, virtual host only ethernet adapter okay so i will tell you where it is there so as soon as you install did i inst start the recording yes it is started so as soon as you install virtual box on your system you will get something like this this entry should be there when you say ip config okay because since you are going to install your virtual box on your windows so just try to see uh, just download the virtual box don't install it first go to your uh, command line and type ip config okay and try to see if this entry is available and ethernet adapter virtual box host only network okay host only network uh if you see oh this is not there then you install it install virtual box okay and uh, mm -hmm. i'm just like uh, warning you basically if you already have virtual vmware available on your system uninstall it okay otherwise there will be conflict between virtual box and virtual uh, vmware and uh, they both install their virtual adapters on your machine and they get you know they they may conflict with each other because both are them both of them are like kind of providing the virtualization on the top of your physical machine and if you have both of them sometimes it may work properly sometimes it may not and i have found a lot of issues when the vmware is already installed and somebody is saying that oh on virtual box uh, the host only adapter is not visible i'm not able to get host only ip address i'm not able to connect to nat there are a lot of problems and when they just install vmware and reinstall the virtual box everything is proper okay so if any of your machines are having vmware already installed and if you're not using it for any office purposes only uh, just for your personal uh, learning only then just uninstall it because anyways for this particular overall class or overall syllabus you are not going to use vmware okay and vmware is again first two more things that is what i found with vmware is first one first one is it is not free second one is it does not support multiple adapters for same machine okay so <clears throat> when you install virtual box you will then see this kind of entry okay and it tells you that its ipv4 address is 192.168.56.1 so this is going to be one more you know dhcp server okay so now i will i will tell you that there are there could be you know more than one dhcp server running with your virtual boxes virtual box okay when we talk about bridge connection okay so i will just go here and try to show you if you go to network and select let's say bridge adapter for any of the things apparently i am not so if i say bridge this is actually obtained okay whatever image that is having the bridge adapter to be connected or bridge adapter in in one of its adapter that bridge adapter will get the ip address directly from your wifi router at your home that is what is called bridge and then when you select bridge you need to provide the uh, you know physical adapter that is on your machine these two are physical adapters okay that are in, those are installed on your machine so this is my wifi adapter by default it will be selected by wifi suppose if you are connected to lane i mean you have your hardware lane connected to your laptop from your wifi router 
basically you need to select this physical adapter so that this physical adapter will actually take the IP address from your DHCP server of your Wi-Fi router. Okay, so the design we have been talking about is only this bridge adapter only. Okay, so if you go up and uh, so this design where you will get one IP address, let me change the color. So one IP address is given to your Windows over here and one IP address is given to your Linux. These two separate red lines is two different separate IP address that are being provided by your Wi-Fi router. So in this case, the DHCP server of your Wi-Fi router is in active mode basically or it is, this is what actually is being done by the DHCP server in your Wi-Fi router. Now, there are two more possible combination that you can run with. So one is host only and another is an AT. This is something called network address translation. So this is one more scheme of getting the IP address and this is one more scheme of getting IP. So these are two more to be discussed. So <clears throat> when you say host only, right? So host only, we have seen that as soon as we install VirtualBox, there is host only Ethernet adapter get installed. Now, who owns it? Windows owns it. Okay, because it is installed on Windows. Okay. So what will happen is, when you talk about host only, there is the DHCP server of Windows. So Windows also running, uh, Windows also has in uh, its own DHCP server. And the virtual box, that is this entity over here, I mean this whole, there is also one DHCP server setting. Suppose if you want to find that how to how to see the DHCP setting of our virtual box. So virtual box also being a software comes with a DHCP server. Okay, and then you can configure the DHCP server to provide the IP addresses to this machine. This machine. Okay. So how to how to how to go up to that? Uh, go to virtual media network operations manager. Go to here. There are no active pages. Delete go to preferences then there is something called network so NAD network and host only so virtual host only adapter virtual host only adapter that can talk only to the windows that is host host means who is the host of this virtual box okay the host is windows okay and it should get the IP address assigned by the windows if it is host only NAT is the service that is provided within or DHCP server that is within run uh, that is running within the uh, virtual box will provide it. So let me just find out that. Okay. So this is DHCP server, see, uh, this particular portion, okay, it is uh, what is called network address, or network uh, part of it. It is start with 101 and go up to 254, okay, so how much, around 153 IP address it can generate, you can change it here. So server address, it means that some DHCP server is running over here, 56, okay, and can start giving the IP addresses from, if you see this 190.168.56, it is 192.168.56, starting from 100, the subnet mask is 255, so I will tell you more on that subnet. And then IPv4 address is uh, 104. 
156.1 so sorry 160.56.1 so it is this thing that is for host only for net networks what it says if i sir click we'll just leave it what is about setting okay NAT network okay so if you see the IP addresses of it is quite completely different 10.0.2.0 and this 24 this 24 is uh, will help you to decide that what would be the you know network and so uh, okay let me let me know to talk more on it basically before before coming to it so let me just you know <coughs> So this installation almost done let me finish uh, let's this finish and then we will talk about you know subnet and more more about network that, that, that should be clear when we actually see all these terms we should not get confused So I think it's time for our break. Right? We started with twelve thirty, and it's almost two twenty three. So let this complete. So center install is complete. Please reboot to use the install system. So I will just say reboot. So this running Anaconda 13. If you see this running Anaconda, so we will talk about that also. What is Anaconda?
डू फॉरवर्ड येस आई एग्री टू द लाइसेंस एग्रीमेंट फॉरवर्ड नाउ क्रिएट यूर ओन नेम एंड सो आई एम जस्ट कॉपिंग इट एवरी वेयर सो दिस वुड बी न्यू यूजर क्रिएटेड एज मी मान एंड दिस पासवर्ड इज ऑल्सो वन वन यूजर दैट इज सुपर यूजर ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड कॉल्ड रूट एंड दिस इज द न्यू यूजर कॉल्ड मी मान गो फॉरवर्ड डू यस डेट टाइम इज ओके इनेबल के डम आई विल टेल यू जस्ट से फिनिश okay now the things started basically you need to just either can log in with mimant or root to ask you the password password that's it okay so you will now see the desktop of linux and now this is the operating system running on our one more operating system running on our system so the desktop is quite gui kind of thing but we will not use it much we mostly do the things through command line okay so let it run uh, let's take a break let's meet 1450 50 and then we will start again <laughs> 